That title probably got your attention about cables and whether they'll make a difference and kind of implying that they do. And the short answer is that they almost certainly can make a difference, but it can only be in one way. So I'm going to elaborate on that briefly and say that any well-made, competently made cable, when compared to another well-made, competently cabled, uh, made cable, spec'd for the purpose, you know, it's not undersized, it's oversized really doesn't matter. You can make it as big as you want, as long as it's not picking up anything, okay? You know, proper shielding on your interconnects and the correct size between speaker cables, they're all gonna sound the same because they're gonna deliver the signal faithfully. Now, where these other cables come in and the possibility of sounding different happens is that they would degrade the signal in some way. And that applies to the interconnect from your source to your amplifier and the speaker cable from the amplifier to the speakers. The only way they can make a change that would be audible to you, the listener, is by degrading the signal in some way. There are a lot of things about audio that seem like magic to people, especially when they sit down and they listen and something sounds so amazing. You know, it's almost like you're there. It's an illusion. It's that 3D illusion that is, you know, a pinpoint precise imaging soundstage that's set up with a, you know, a decent set pair of speakers in a, in a pretty good room and sitting in the right spot. You know, this can almost seem like magic, but <laughs> at the end of the day, everything that's happening here is well within science. Okay. Well within objective science on that side of it. Okay. Your perception of it, you know, how much you like it, how good it sounds to your ears and your preference, that's subjective. All right, there's no magic involved there. That's just being human. So this is what trips up a lot of people, the mystification of what goes on. And it's not helped by manufacturers that are interested in selling products, which I can't blame them. I mean, I've said myself here on these videos that to sell the video, I've made a provocative title and it's almost the same thing. What you got to do is a sprinkle a little bit of fairy dust on your product by adding some mystical quality and people, it's not that they're, you know, so irrational <laughs> in their everyday life that they'll believe anything, but they tend to like to believe that. All right. And it's not that they, they fully believe it. It's that they don't disbelieve it. They like to believe it because they think that you can get better sound by adding these things that are supposedly better. So I said all of this is objective and I know my previous videos, a lot of people think that I've gone full on subjectivist on it. You know, Mr. Magical subjectivist, because I said that speakers operate in the room and you have to treat them as a system, uh, you know, a one system and not look at them separately because the room is basically useless without the speakers in there. And the speakers are basically useless unless you put them in a room and play them. Okay. Or wherever you're playing them, they work together. You know, one relies on the other. So I want to talk about the objective hierarchy of importance of different factors that will affect sound quality that reaches your ears. Okay. At the very bottom, as in being the least important, is the electronics, the differences that are going to be between those. Okay. Because as you know, I said, already said, you know, there's not going to be a huge difference between competently made components as in amplifiers that are well-made, well-designed and not malfunctioning or equalizing the music that you're hearing as in adding you know, second harmonic distortion to make it sound richer or fuller or sweeter or whatever, they're all going to sound basically the same. There might be subtle differences between them, 
But that's the key word here. It's going to be very subtle and you're going to have to listen very closely to hear it. And at the end of the day, is it better? Is one better than the other? OK, can you definitely say probably not? So up from that, and this is largely out of your control, is the recordings themselves. Everybody knows there are better recordings and there are really bad recordings. But if you really like the music, you can get past that. Next up from the recordings are the speakers themselves, their objective performance. These are the measurements that you can look at or consult that will tell you how it's performing. But like I said, a very limited utility for the average consumer because he's kind of locked into what he can buy in a certain price range. And basically, you're not going to get a lot of variability there, especially these days. There's nobody making really bad speakers. Next up from the speakers and really the only thing left is the room itself. Because like I said before, and you don't have to trust me, I'll play a short quote here that you can reference. So here's the, the nasty little secret. It, it doesn't matter how expensive the gear is. The room is going to screw it up. And there, there is no way that a $50,000 speaker is less affected by a room than a $300 speaker. You take an amazing pair of speakers, doesn't matter how much it costs, put it in a terrible room, and your sound quality is not going to be good. It's certainly not going to be great. So this is the system I'm referring to. The speaker room system of the two, the more important and the one that's actually within your control is the room. And you might say, well, how is it in my control? Well, it's in your control because there are lots of things you can do in the room to improve the sound quality, including moving to another room, moving to a better room. That's always an option, or maybe it's not always an option, but it is an option if you have that option. Okay. Uh, the other thing is positioning your speakers to a better place, positioning yourself in a better place. You know, your listening position, the speaker position, how much they're towed in, you know, where they are height wise, you can change all this. You can, you can actually also, and you know, this is worth a try if you're having a problem, tilt them back or tilt them ahead, you know, by adding blocks underneath them to make them do that, right? These things can make a change, especially in a highly reflective room, right? The other big thing that you can do, and a lot, I know a lot of people can't do this, is add enough effective room treatment to make it sound better. And specifically what I mean is to add treatment that's going to be effective in the base region because that's the biggest problems in all rooms of any size. Well, within limits, really, really big rooms, which is probably not, a, you know, a factor here are going to be different. Okay. But smaller rooms base is where it's at. You have to treat that. That means thick absorbers, not thin ones. You put thin ones around, you're only going to absorb the mids and highs. And these are the ones that you really need to be careful to preserve, to keep that kind of live quality of the room. Instead, what you're looking for is to try to even out the response in your typical room with no treatment. It's going to be very long reverb times down low and fairly, you know, medium ones up higher. When you add thick panels, it knocks down the reverb down, time down low. It's not super effective down there, but if you put enough of it in, it really will impact it. And it also takes care of the mid and high to bring those down. So you, tr you wind up with something that's more even. The politics of audio, what the heck is John talking about now, this crazy fool? Well, as I mentioned in another recent video, where I talked about objective, versus subjective. There are basically two camps in audio, two bigger camps. Okay. And the, and I guess this has always been that way to a certain degree, but it's really the case these days with the internet where people can, you know, congregate and congratulate each other and pat each other on the back for having the same view as them and shun and deride and raw mock and ridicule 
anyone else that thinks differently from them. So, you know, you have the magical thinkers. These are the subjectivists, the pure subjectivists that think everything is, you know, nothing can be measured. Everything is subjective. And then you have the lab coats, <laughs> Sheldon Cooper types over here, the objective thinkers. I don't want to say objectivists because objectivist is not, you know, what they are. Objectivist is a follower of Ayn Rand, right? a philosophy. This philosophy over here thinks that everything can be explained with the numbers. So we have these two camps and like I said, they're the big ones, but there are people in the middle and that's where you're going to find me. I'm going to be like the libertarian <laughs> of the, uh, or the objectivist, you could say, of the audio world where I see some things that I agree with from the subjectivists, not certainly not everything, <laughs> not even close. And I also see a lot of things that I agree with from the objective. So I'm in the middle. I hold both views and I can see problems in both. You know, I can see the magical, mystical thinking in the subjectivist and I can see the too hard logic, you know, subjectivity is off the table from the objective thinkers over here. And I would encourage, you know, you to be that way, to try to have a little bit more of an open mind to different things. And I saw a lot of opposition to the one, these videos that I'm making here, where I'm saying what people are interpreting as magical, mystical subjectivism, when in actual fact, they're science based, but in the middle. It's not completely over here and it's certainly not completely over there. It's in here where the truth lies in all things. You know, like take your modern politics, for example, I'm not going to go there, but just take it as an example. You know, this heart over here, do they have all the right answers? I don't think so. What about this one over here? Definitely not. They don't have all the, all the answers either. So in the middle, find the place in the middle to be. And also, and this is crucial to your sanity, <laughs> don't take it so seriously. It's just audio. One of these days you'll be dead, rotting in the ground, and life will go on for everyone else. And especially to say the 99.9% .9 of the population that doesn't give a hoot about any of this stuff.